Hi all, I have another very interesting game to show you. This is by Marius Bofa, posted in the Leela Chess forums. I'll give you the uh, hardware specs and time limit in the pinned comment of this video. Uh, so it's Stockfish 9 against Leela ID 10595. Let's have a look. The book moves given is the very topical Queen's Gambit declined uh, semi Slav, where there's been a huge number of over the board master games and grandmaster games in this line. So, this is up to here the end of the book. So, this is uh, a very well known line. We have now Leela playing Bishop b7, and this is still uh, well trodden territory h4, g4, the knight goes to e5. Knight BD7, Knight takes, Queen takes, Bishop E5, and here there's about 40 plus games in Chess Base Live Book with the move Queen E7, and at first I thought, well, Leader's move is also protecting the Knight, so is there a big deal? Queen E8. In fact, it seems no one has tried this move ever before, and you might think, well. Although it does protect the knight and it doesn't hem in the bishop, but doesn't it interfere with castling queenside? So, overall, isn't it silly? Uh, so, is this just an obscured TN because black surely wants to castle queenside? This is counterproductive, this move, right? There's no point just opening up this bishop, is there? This is what I initially thought. Uh, so, Queen e7, as an example, um, bishop takes g4. Uh, here, rook g8. This this kind of thing. White has a small edge. Uh, so, and there's an interesting Nakamura game as well uh, to check out uh, in in this line. Uh, so here, after rook g8. Um, there's a Nakamura game. Uh, instead of bishop takes g4, in fact Nakamura played b3. Uh, so this was uh, Nakamura against Ding Liren, St. Louis 2016. So a fascinating, actually a very sharp game there between the two, Nakamura playing white. When white castled queenside here, and broke through with d5. Queen takes h4 seems to be the fatal mistake. Uh, rook c8 would have held equality, but the game finished uh, pretty soon, or actually, with this brilliant idea of Nakamura's knight d5. So, with the idea of queen c8 check, and not <laughs> the queen's protecting b8, but Nakamura's idea was actually rook takes with the slow rook a8 threatened, which is big trouble for black. Black tries this. We have bishop takes b5, check, f6, and now rook e6. This is just crushing. And Nakamura won a fine game there. After queen takes b8, crushing game. Very interesting. And it's in this line. So th this is the top rated game, I find. Queen e7, thing they're on. Queen e7. But he's in good company. There's 40 other games of this. No one's played queen d8. <laughs> which excites me. Is this some sort of theoretical novelty? As I say, isn't it pointless this versus castling queenside? Or is it? Let's see. Bishop takes g4, rook g8, bishop f3, knight d7, bishop drops back. And here comes the invisible points, I think, which are very, very easy to miss. e5. E5 here with the bishop on f8. <laughs> I, 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 okay, I'm going to try and put it out there. Basically, this is this is this. I don't know how far sighted this is, um, but basically, if black can get simplification, the queen side pawn mass is going to be more important in end games. And it seems with this little nuance, the queen on being on d8. This is important for simplification purposes. In other words, to maximize the potential of these past pawns, this tiny little, apparently insignificant nuance has big impact here. Because uh, if white castles, 
e takes d4 queen takes d4 and guess what black has here rook takes g3 the queen is not interfering with the bishop and lo and behold we've got possibility of bishop c5 here that's just one thing but e5 was played in this position d takes uh, on bishop takes you might ask well this position is fine for black white doesn't really want to give up that bishop that easily so d takes and the point here <laughs> guess what Leela plays in this position as I say I believe it's far-sighted this whole thing from Queen d8 it's far-sighted Rook takes g3 Leela is positively uh, going in for this exchange sack now and positively wants the Queens off the board the Queen is staring at this Queen that's another difference on e7 it's, there's no staring contest the Queen is staring at White's Queen and there's Knight d3 check on the way so white castled I mean this position with Queen takes is fine actually for black there's enough compensation here already it's fine it's very difficult for white in fact to play this I believe uh, so we have white castling and Lila takes off those Queens this is one beautiful benefit of Queen E8. I don't know if this is like a major novelty in this whole Slav thing, because basically, you know, the exchange sack and, and this this continuation is simplifying. And now look at the pawn mass. This is what I mean. Is this a far-sighted innovation? Knight E2, Bishop go, goes back, Bishop D7, Bishop C5 is played, Rook F6. Bishop e3 protecting the h6 pawn. Now here, rook d8 ignoring the pressure on f7. We have knight f4 instead. On bishop takes king e7, this position, bishop e6. Here, the pawns are making some progress. And in fact, black should end up being slightly better at this point, even by traditional AB valuation standards. Uh, alpha beta. Uh, chess engines like black hair already uh, so let's see so knight f4 though and now uh, bishop d4 is played there is actually a key threat here of bishop takes example uh, if black plays b4 then bishop takes f7 knight takes knight g6 is very very awkward for black indeed so for example here rook takes uh, and white is threatening rook f8 chat mating here so this move say to give the king some air and white's actually ending up uh, significantly better so bishop d4 was played against this stuff rook b1 king e7 now rook takes h6 a4 look at this pawn mass it's gaining in importance rook h7 b4 gaining in importance again it seems <laughs> Lila's queen d8 has got this kind of end game transition which is a very very favorable <laughs> end game position well queenless position not end game but queenless position bishop g4 is played wanting more simplification because then even more weight for the pawns the gravity of the pawns is becoming even more evident here on bishop takes a4 you might ask there's rook a8 and c3 this seems good this continuation with c2 bishop d1 this continuation is just very nice for black so bishop takes g4 was played instead of bishop takes a4 knight takes and <laughs> e5 is played maybe white's already slightly nervous and twitchy <laughs> this is taken rook h5 c5 another pawn push push those pawns king d6 we have rook d7 king c6 now knight d3 more simplification encouraged by Leela. knight takes c takes look at these pawns now four to two over here 
b3 bishop c3 rook d1 another pawn push a3 form pawn thrn for end game purposes the form pawn is only two steps away from queening check f6 rook h8 d2 another pawn push look at white's pawns hopeless that just moles away from doing anything rook e8 guess what black plays now if i give you five seconds to pause the video Okay, c4. This is a breakthrough move. The pawns are just too powerful now. King c5. Check. King's coming in with just herding the pawns now, basically. King d3. Rook steps away for a moment. Check. King c2. Rook c7. This pawn's taken. Rook c7. This pawn's putting a stop to this pawn. <laughs> that one's taken. Rook h7. White's pretty desperate because I believe basically this b3 cannot be parried for a2. So white's actually pretty aimless at the moment. Rook e1. And now finally b3. Just breaking through with the a pawn, the form pawn. Triumphs here. The game ended just as, about the, as the form pawn was about to move. It could have continued with a2, and it's clear that this is not a very pleasant position for white. Going to be losing both rooks. I'll take you to the final position. I suspect, <laughs> I, I suspect, grandmasters might be interested in this game. There does appear to be a theoretical novelty with queen d8, which has a long range impact for transitioning. The position to take away the bishop for the rook to take, take away the queens for the pawn mass to be significant um, the short-term king safety issues addressed then the pawn mass the weight of it is just increasing after and that sort of stuff is very very difficult to calculate i believe from a normal chess engine perspective leela ruthlessly uh, pursued aggressive simplification through that sack, uh, exchange sack, queens coming off, other bits coming off, the pawns just kept creeping forward. I don't know what you think about this. I think this is pretty deep sighted uh, strategy tactics at the service of it here with the exchange sack. Queen d8 seems to be <laughs> a stunning novelty in my view. It's just not been played before in chess plays live book, it seems. Maybe it's been played in correspondence games. But as far as over the board games, it's not in my chess based live book. Comments, questions, like, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.